this day. So that's what I'm going to talk about today. I hope you like the video. If you do, please do like it. Maybe subscribe. Thanks so much for watching. Hi, I'm Mark, and this is my journey through tarot. Come with. So yeah, so Sandra Friend one of the viewers asked about Opus Day, so I thought, yeah, I'll see what is Opus Day. I really didn't have any idea what it is. Then I found out it was part of that Da Vinci Code, and then I found out it's something real and it's attached to the Catholic Church. And I said, well, what the heck is Opus Day? And then, of course, I found Wiki, and everything was answered. Everything was fine. I now know what is Opus Day, and I've condensed like uh, I don't know twenty pages from Wiki down to barely a page. And I'll tell you all about Opus Day. Here we go. So Opus Day, and that's O P U S. D-E-I, Opus Dei, two words, um, Latin, uh, is an institution of the Catholic Church teaching that everyone is called to holiness, uh, that ordinary life is a path to that, to holiness, okay? So in 1928, this idea was uh, founded by a Catholic priest in Madrid who had an actual vision of some sort of Opus Dei, and uh, those uh, two Latin words actually mean uh, work of God. Uh, so Opus Dei does have a kind of supernatural uh, character, suggesting that, uh, like life itself, you know, life itself is a way to holiness and uh, evangelization. Evangelization? Evangelization. That's a fun word to say once you get in the rhythm of it. But anyway, uh, so in 1936, during the Spanish Civil War, Catholic priests and religious figures were forced into hiding. And then in 1939, the founding priest published a collection of 999 truths of spirituality for regular folks. Uh, 1940s, the Jesuit Superior General considered this a form of Christian uh, masonry. Now, and, and this has some of that mysterious negative connotation. People think of masonry, like Freemasons, as something bad. But uh, Freemasonry can be defined as a system of secret signs in order to recognize one another. Simply that. Simply that. Uh, 1945, Opus Dei uh, expanded uh, internationally. And then in 1946, the headquarters moved from Madrid to Rome. Uh, 1950, and for some reason also 1980, 300,000 baby kidnappings uh, amounted to illegal adoptions in Spain and were said to be caused by Opus Dei doctors, priests, and secret police, but this wasn't proven. And so Opus Dei was called Holy Mafia uh, because of that, and it's a term that's still used, I guess. However, Pope Pius XII gave uh, Opus Dei approval, and that was all, and that was all uh, probably 1980. Uh, 1982, the first head of Opus Dei is appointed known as the Prelate. And uh, what is prelate? And that's the primary governing authority. And in this case, assisted by a council of men and a central advisory of women. The uh, prelate holds the position for life. So that guy is there till he's dead. Now, dead. Now, in 2005, the Da Vinci Code, um, remember the novel came out first, that was uh, 2005, so Opus Dei received kind of a negative attention because of the novel where it was the Catholic, it, Opus Dei and the Catholic Church were depicted uh, negatively, uh, you know, for effect, artistic uh, effect. But people took that for real and for the gospel. So that's where the problem starts. Uh, as clarity, Opus Dei emphasizes a universal call. Opus Dei actually, okay, emphasizes a universal call to holiness, a belief that everyone can aspire to be a saint or at least saintly uh, to love God, to try to be perfect. Holiness is within everyone's reach. So simply put, work and professional confidence is important. Um, find God in daily life is what the, the theory of this thing. Work excellently as a service to society and an offering to God. 
That's nice. Also, uh, freedom, respecting choice and taking personal responsibility, charity, love of God, and all, all, all above all, love of others. All of those things are holy choices. So 2017, the current and the third uh, prelate of Opus Day is chosen. Now let's see, in 2018, there are 95,000 plus members of that pre prelature. So I guess those are the re religious part. And there's 93,000 plus laypersons and 2,000 plus actual priests. And 70% of all of these people live in private homes, lead regular lives, and uh, have regular careers and run universities, schools, publishing houses, hospitals. Uh, they work in technology, uh, agriculture, and 30% are actually celibate. Now members, members set up 608 social initiatives uh, also schools and university uh, residents so okay so members of this this organization set up 608 social initiatives and then also schools and university residences uh, what else technical or agricultural training centers universities business schools and hospitals man i mean that's all good uh, criticisms of Opus Dei have caused Catholic scholars and writers to call Opus Dei a sign of contradiction. That sounds like a bad thing, but actually it's not in, in their speak. Contradiction is said to be one of the proofs of God's favor, meaning contradiction is often a signal of something favorable to God in the long run. Uh, almost all founders of societies in the church have suffered. Huh, that's interesting. Opus Dei uh, has been attacked, its motives un misunderstood, but thoughtful inquiry has always vindicated Opus Dei. So the organization's aim is the sanctification or a holier direction of life, of your life, as a matter of fact, while maintaining, uh, remaining within the world at your place of work and profession and living um, the gospel in the world. <laughs> and so most of the criticisms of Opus Dei are myths and unproven tales. Interesting. So let's draw some cards. Okay, so this is the Visconti Tarot. And this is a um, Los Caravillo uh, deck here. These are gilded, and they're very cool to um, to use. I just don't know that they show up as well on the camera as they look in person. Um, I don't think they do. The uh, instruction booklet that comes with them is, you know, run of the mill. It's in a couple different languages, I think. And um, so it's fun. Now the cards are, you know, regular shape and. And the cool thing about them is the gilding uh, that's on them. So that's what's so very nice. I mean, in person, they're really amazing, amazing. And I don't think they show up as well on the camera. Um, but, um, but they're still fun to use. And there's some people that this really gilded look of card really is the right, or some situations where this is the right thing to use. So I spread these out so that you can get a look at them and see what kind of different cards are. I've got quite a few decks and... Um, what I do, actually, is I use credit cards that give me uh, uh, cash benefits, and then that's what I use to buy these cards with. So there you go. So if you think you'd like these, Visconti Tarot, then you should give them a try. So interesting. So now that we've clearly defined what Opus Dei is, uh, then this uh, reading can make some sense. So that's why it's so, uh, so uh, important. Uh, when someone's asking you to uh, read the cards, to know that you're both on the same page about what you're uh, asking. Okay? So, Opus Day, And uh, Sandra wants to know uh, if some of these uh, um, nonprofit organizations that are working uh, in uh, and around all the situations that are happening right now, if they're involved with Opus, Opus Day. So you have to think that there's a large percentage of those uh, 95,000 uh, members um, in the United States, wouldn't you? I guess. I mean, but then whatever percentage that is that are from the United States, once you dilute that down into the population of the United States, then there are not that many people. So you know, are they that effective? And um, are these uh, political situations what would call to them, or would they be more involved with uh, developing uh, people's uh, skills and educations? Don't know. Don't know any of that. So, are, with this clear understanding of what Opus Dei is, are these uh, nonprofit questionable organizations uh, involved with Opus Dei? Okay. So, let's get six cards. Off the top, one, two, 
three, four, five, and six. Okay, so Opus Day sounds pretty terrific to me. Opus Day. Are you working some magic behind the scenes with these nonprofits involved with the issues we're having today? So this is the uh, King of Wands. You know, I have to say uh, maybe that's a yes, because the, the King of Wands are planning and uh, motion and forward action. You know, they're the firepower. And the King is absolutely the man who's going to uh, make sure that these things get carried out. So that's a potential yes. Uh, the um, challenge to that then is the, oh, another King. This is the King of Cups. Ah, the challenge to these plans is, of course, all the compassion, all the emotion, all the serious uh, uh, heart-wrenching situations that uh, could bring uh, Opus Day uh, uh, that they could be faced with in these situations. That's interesting. Uh, the base of this reading, then, is uh, judgment. Of course it is. Um, that's what we're talking about. We're talking about uh, Christ. We're talking about God. We're talking about doing the right thing and how uh, maybe you're going to be perceived. Uh, so, yeah, that's, it's all about judgment it is undergirding everything here. The past to this reading, then, ah, it's the world. So, you know, and so Opus Day, as we just found out, is a worldwide organization. Okay. So they have been dealing with issues all over the world. And then the sky of this reading is uh, the hermit. Okay. So that tells me that, you know, not only uh, this uh, speaks to kind of the secretive uh, aspect of this situation. The hermit could be seen as someone standing out of the light, uh, lurking in the shadows, and also, but I like to think of him too, uh, even more so, as uh, s seeking his way, you know, before he makes a plan, before he moves forward, being careful uh, to uh, just take baby steps in making those things happen. So I think it applies in both of those um, both of those understandings. Uh, the, uh, hope, the likely outcome of this first part of this then is going to be temperance. Yeah, balancing uh, how things are, are, are dealt with, putting in whatever amount of help uh, they can uh, towards whatever the situation is. Yep. So now, uh, is Opus Dei uh, involved in a negative way? Are they an ill, evil, bad influence uh, on uh, what we're talking about here? The signifier card for that, then, Opus Dei, is the Five of Wands. So this does recognize, because the Five of Wands is... Um, typically uh, depicted as uh, five uh, persons uh, kind of uh, battling uh, or uh, even play fighting with each other. So it's confusion, it's um, um, disharmony, but that could be uh, signifying that that's where Opus Day is going to be most effective is when they go ahead and insert themselves into an area of disharmony. Remember, Opus Day, we're trying to find out if they're bad or good. So uh, in either case, whether they're bad or good, they would be looking for opportunities to exercise their power, whether it's for good or evil. Now, let's see what the um, environment of this is in. The environment of this is in the Ten of Wands. And the Ten of Wands, just to make sure I get it right, I'm going to be sure. Okay, yeah, responsibility, burdens, oppressions, burnout, obligations, professions. So, yeah, all these issues are in the, you know, the most difficult situations, obviously. And uh, that's where you're going to find Opus Dei. Um, a lot. Not that they won't be in the beginnings of people's lives helping them go the right way, but they certainly will be effective in these uh, disharm disharmonious areas. So, and then the um, hopes and the fears, if that's the case, are they good or bad, is uh, the Hierophant. Okay, so the Hierophant speaks to the structure, the government, the rules that we're going to have to go by to uh, make the situation happen. And uh, so this will tell me that, yeah, that they'll be following uh, whatever the rules and above those. Remember, this is the Hierophant is also known as the Pope. And uh, this Hierophant is dressed up in, in a Pope's uh, uh, garb, as a matter of fact. So, uh, so yeah, this is perfectly uh, appropriate here. The hopes and the fears is that they would behave uh, in, in the manner of which Pope would expect. And then, and which used to not always be good, but in the current day, and this uh, Gopas day is a modern uh, man's situation, you know, from the uh, 20s or so. So, uh, and then the likely outcome of the whole thing for whether they're good or evil, so far they're good, is the Nine of Wands and uh, that they are going to be embattled. And of course, yes, no, it, whatever you're uh, dealing with the most difficult situations uh, or trying to rise people up, um, you know, of course, you're putting yourself in the face of embattlement, as did, uh, I guess you could say, uh, for for my Christian faith, uh, Jesus Christ and trying to spread uh, his uh, idea. So it looks like, uh, yeah, they're pretty much involved. But what's interesting is they're involved in a not bad way. 
Okay, so uh, we started out with the Opus Dei. Opus Dei, who are you? And you're the King of Wands. Going to get something done with those wands. Actions, plans, uh, motion forward. And then challenged by the Compassion being also at the same time the King of Compassion. Correct? Yeah. So that is the challenge. And the base of the whole thing then was judgment. Of course it is. We're talking about judgment. We're talking about you know how we behave ourselves before we go on to the next whatever it is. Uh, and then uh, in the past of that was, of course, just a little more uh, clarification that we're talking about the world. You know, involved everywhere. And then in the sky of that, we had uh, who? The Hierophant. And the Hierophant is um, the uh, Hermit, kind of hiding in the shadows, but also being careful about moving forward with a plan. And then uh, the likely outcome of the whole thing is that what you need in, in anything like that is temperance. And uh, that's what they would help to find is a balance for humanity. Uh, and then we said, but are they good or evil? And that's when we came up with the Five of Wands, which is kind of argy-bargy, you know, kind of uh, uh, indifference. Not necessarily indifference, but uh, confusion and uh, problems. And that's where uh, you would find, you would think you'd find Opus Day anyway. And uh, that's in the environment of the Ten of Wands, uh, really, really, really uh, the thick of it. Uh, you know, lots of uh, uh, actions and problems, but in the spirit of who? The Pope, the Hierophant, the Pope. So we're good. And then the uh, likely uh, outcome of the whole thing is still, of course, the Nine of Wands, which is really being embattled because that's, you know, you, why do you need uh, a movement of do gooders in an area that's doing good? No, you need it where, it's, where it hurts. Well, I'm Mark. This has been my journey through tarot. I'll be doing it again tomorrow if you want to go, so stop on by. Ciao for now. <laughs>